You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Just three days after Congress voted to acquit, actually after the U.S. Senate voted to acquit Donald Trump for inciting the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, the NAACP has filed a lawsuit against him and his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, plus two white nationalist groups, the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. The NAACP filed the suit on behalf of Democratic Representative Benny Thompson of Mississippi, who is expected to be joined by several other members of Congress within his party. The lawsuit claims Trump violated the, the Ku Klux Klan Act, which was enacted to protect former slaves and lawmakers in Congress from violence by white supremacists. Congressman Thompson, who is 72, has said that if the Senate would have convicted Trump, he would not have filed the lawsuit. Let's talk about this with our panel. Xavier Pope, host of Suit Up News, uh, owner of the Pope Law Firm, Bree Newsom, artist and activist, Q. Bernard Driscoll, adjunct professor at the George Washington University. Uh, glad to have all of you here. Um, Bernard, I'll start with you. Um, let's get... So, uh, for people who don't quite understand, again, these uh, laws, they go back to uh, the, the Civil War era or the Reconstruction era, uh, this is certainly an interesting legal strategy by the NAACP and Benny Thompson. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that had to be done. I mean, they were, the NAACP, they said they would not even bring it, but for the fact that, that the, the Senate chose not to convict Donald Trump. And so um, I think it's just a method, Roland, of some sort of accountability must happen with, with this administration that directly attempted to disregard black people and black votes and we're willing to attack the democracy and put uh, the republic in danger as a result. Uh, what about that, uh, Bernard, and this, this idea of, again, using this particular act that is very specific to, again, attacks against members of Congress? Roland, I'm going to take a very contrarian and perhaps unpopular view here. I don't necessarily see the benefit of this. Yes, I believe in accountability. Yes, I believe this man, i.e. Donald Trump, needs to be held accountable for his actions. But I am not sure, nor am I confident, uh, nor, quite frankly, do I believe that this will hold up in a court of law, right? The premise behind it. Uh, so I think it's not a waste of time, but I think perhaps the NAACP could use its resources towards more sustainable actions to really improve the community. I also think it calls into the question of relevance for the NAACP. Uh, again, if we're going to hold Trump accountable for his actions, I understand that we need to take all means accountable, but is this really the best way possible to do that? I'm not convinced that it is. Well, again, uh, Bree, uh, what you're dealing with, first of all, I, I think we can separate this, this whole idea that NAACP uh, can't do 10 things at one time. Uh, makes no sense. I mean, they file lawsuits every single day. Uh, they file lawsuits in Georgia uh, that dealt with the whole issue of uh, voter suppression. They file lawsuits uh, partnering with other legal groups uh, to challenge voting laws, but they also still are involved in actions that also benefit the community. So the reality is you can do those two things at one time. Uh, but the reality is, but, 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 the, but one second, but the reality is, Bree, we heard Mitch McConnell say on the floor, uh, that Donald Trump, uh, his involvement, and should be taken to task in civil court as, or, or actually in criminal court as well for what he did. This is a Republican Senate minority leader who opened the door saying he should be prosecuted uh, in those uh, forums. This is the NAACP saying, okay, we'll start. Yes, and I think that, in, in my view, the strategy here is you have to go after the money. You have to attack the networks. And I think that is part of the logic behind it. This is something that has been employed in the past. Um, we see this frequently, right, where we'll have people who they, they want to go after Trump, but they're not really trying to take over or, or take on white supremacy and challenge it. And that's essentially what we saw play out with impeachment. So McConnell gets up. And he basically acknowledges, you know, everything that was put forward in the case, but they're not going to hold Trump responsible for it. Um, and so from that perspective, I think this can be very effective, like even regardless of how 
it plays out ultimately in the judgment, you have the potential to bankrupt some of these white supremacist organizations um, and to expose the flow of money that's going to them as well. Because, see, in order for them to mount a defense, they're going to have to try to reach out to those other revenue streams who I'm sure are not going to want to come forward on the public record in terms of supporting them. Um, and this has been effective in past decades in terms of, like, you know, really cracking down on the Ku Klux Klan. Um, this is the thing. This is uh, from Senate.gov. Go to my iPad, please. Um, uh, this is what it says. It says, uh, in its first effort to counteract such use of violence and intimidation, Congress passed the Enforcement Act of May 1870, which prohibited groups of people from banding together, quote, or to go in disguise upon the public highways or upon the premises of another with the intention of violating citizens' constitutional rights. Even this legislation did not diminish harassment of black voters in some areas. It then said that while these committees were investigating Southern attempts to impede Reconstruction, the Senate passed two more forced acts, also known as the Ku Klux Klan Acts, designed to enforce the 14th Amendment and the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The second forced act, which became law in February 1871, placed administration of national elections under the control of the federal government and empowered federal judges and United States Marshals to supervise local polling places. The Third Force Act, dated April 1871, empowered the president to use the armed forces to combat those who conspired to deny equal protection of the laws and to, to suspend habeas corpus if necessary to enforce the act. And so this was about again, protecting the rights of citizens, but also members of Congress, Xavier, here you had a group of people who were storming the U.S. Capitol who wanted to actually change the results of the election. If we don't have use of laws that are put in place to protect black votes that don't actually serve to protect black votes, why aren't they on the books? That's the reason why the 14th Amendment, Section 3, is involved in terms of being able to make sure someone like Donald Trump never holds office again. That's what the Ku Klux Klan Act is put in place to be able to protect black votes and black people. None of us as black people on this panel or on your show should be advocating for a process that doesn't use the laws that are on the books to protect black people. Um, we should be shouting at the rooftops for every avenue, and I'm so glad the NAACP is taking this move to be able to protect black people. It doesn't matter, and, and Brees uh, made a great point there in, in terms of saying that uh, you know this would weaken donors. I mean, I think that this process puts public record potentially with some sort of uh, any uh, any discovery that comes at hand or any information that becomes available. And once the media starts reporting this, this really makes Donald Trump, it really makes the Republican Party look bad. And so it may have, may not necessarily have the legal effect that um, that that NAAC may, might want, but it may have a political effect and a social impact um, that the NAACP wants. And that's what the um, what this why this is important. Quadri, because here's the deal: we 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 literally saw uh, we, we saw no witnesses come forward in the Senate's uh, impeachment trial. Um, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani. Um, you don't have and you don't have Congressman Kevin McCarthy or any of these people who are testifying. Uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi today announced it's going to be a 911 style commission to look into what took place on that particular day. So if Mitch, if Senator Mitch McConnell stands up and these 43 Republicans stand up and say, "Oh, it was unconstitutional uh, to actually have this trial," even though they voted and they voted that it was indeed constitutional, so that argument really made no sense. Well. Should there not be some recourse? Should there not be some effort to hold folks accountable for what took place on that day? The fans are arresting people, but what about those who incited? Why is it that, should there not be recourse to hold them accountable for the lies they continue to spread and for what they uh, basically incited? Absolutely, there should be recourse. So what is it? Yeah. What's the recourse? Yeah. What you have in even in the state of Georgia, the, the attorney, the Fulton County District Attorney, uh, Wellis, is suing Donald Trump, right? Uh, that's 
I think, a, a very viable option versus than what the NAACP is, is trying to do here. But, but Quadricos, the, well, Quadricos, the Georgia case is only specific to Georgia. The phone call that Donald Trump made to Georgia. They're also investigating Sir and Lindsey Graham. What took place in January 6th, that was the nation. It wasn't just Georgia. Correct, Roland. What I am saying, and perhaps it may come across that I'm hating on the NAACP. No, no, no. I'm just trying to understand it. But I, I don't think that this effort is going to be viable, quite frankly. Are there ways, are there other ways to hold Donald Trump and these these those, those insurrectionists accountable? Absolutely. So what are, what, what are they? What are they? What we can really see, What are they? Though, what are the other like, ways? No, 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 seriously. What are the other ways? From your vantage point, what are the other ways? The other ways? Arrest yeah. them, right? Arrest them. How? Bring them, how? How, what do you mean? How? We okay. For, okay. Who, okay. Uh, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. When you say arrest, hold on. When you say arrest, uh, hold on. One second. One second. When you say arrest them, you mean arrest Trump and Giuliani? No, I mean arrest those who were at the insurrectionists, the rioters. Arrest those individuals. Okay, that's being done. What else? So what? I mean, what else are you all trying to suggest? Right. No, 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 what, 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 what I'm trying to suggest, and Bree, you can speak to this. What I'm trying to. What, what I'm trying to suggest is, I'm saying arrest those who were involved in the insurrection and go after those who played a role inside in the insurrection. Bree. Bree? Yeah, like if, if I may, I I continue to feel that the magnitude of what happened on. January 6th is way underplayed, like in general. I right. Mean, this is arguably like the, the most significant event since the United States Civil War. It was an attempt to overthrow the government. And so I think on, on one hand, it's a question of what does an organization like NAACP do in response? And I think what they're doing is the appropriate thing. I think arresting the folks who were there is key. But we've also seen that the, the failure uh, that's already happening in terms of arresting people, they're going after the lowest level folks. Um, we already know that there has been involvement and coordination with police and military. I mean, the scope of, of this is enormous. And I think that um, we have to meet it. I, I kind of agree. It's like every single possible avenue that can be used in going after it is necessary and should be employed. I was quite frankly disappointed in the way that impeachment played out. I think that they should have called witnesses. I think they should have made it extremely clear the seriousness of this, that this is not anything to rush through. But I am glad that they're talking about putting together an independent commission because that's what is required. We need to know the exact networks that were involved in this. There are a lot of people. This was a this was a massive conspiracy um, that was going on, and it's it's only just by chance and 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 by you know circumstance that more people weren't killed that day. That they they came very close to assassinating Congress people, to possibly taking siege of the Capitol. Um, and I know that you know Republicans and conservatives and white supremacist sympathizers are going to constantly try to downplay this. And I think we can't allow them to do that. Um, last thing I would say about the importance of what the NAACP is doing is their action really refocuses the fact that this was about attacking the black vote. And, you know, there, there's a lot of, like, trying to kind of, like, steer away and downplay that. This was specifically about trying to overthrow the uh, black voters. The places that they were trying to target were specifically places where black voting made the difference. And I think that the NAACP case really brings that to the forefront. Um, I, I think that th that, is, that is absolutely correct. I do believe, uh, Xavier, that, that this... To hear Ron Johnson, well, I mean, this really wasn't an insurrection. I didn't see weapons. Dude, there were folks with baseball bats. There were folks with zip ties. There were individuals uh, who were using flagpoles who beat Capitol Hill police officers. I'm saying, I mean, this, this effort by Republicans to severely underplay what took place on January 6th I mean, this was for all of the whining and complaining about uh, the 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 uh, the protests in Portland or Kenosha, Wisconsin, and other places. These individuals literally discarded barricades around the U.S. Capitol. They were beating one guy's now being pursued for gouging out the eye of a Capitol Hill police officer, and they act like ah, things got a little out of hand at the Capitol Hill picnic on January sixth. There were bombs planted in D.C. Can I say that again? There were bombs 
by American citizens who are supposed to be the most patriotic, patriotic of people, um, and yet they are planting bombs in our cities. They, five people are dead. It is amazing a month after this insurrection that now there's an attempt to downplay how violent it was in the threat that was to, the, to this democracy. You saw a video of Officer Gene Goodman directing the life of, of, of Mitt Romney, who was just short steps from being attacked in, by the individual that stormed the Capitol. Uh, there is no way that we can turn around and let the, the narrative be posed that an insurrection that led to death should be overlooked. And I do believe that the best way that an organization that represents black people should go along and to address the direct issue, which is people were willing to, dis to burn down the democracy for white supremacy. We cannot sugarcoat this. People that are opinion hosts that are riling people up on uh, other networks, we should hold them accountable for the things they have done as well. This is a step by step by step. Now, the Republicans, they would have took every single avenue. They would have called every witness. They would have called the mamas of the witness, the cousins of the witness. They would have done everything possible to be able to, we saw what happened with Benghazi. They would have gone every length to do this if this were black people storming the Capitol to protect the presidency of Barack Obama. So let us be clear, we cannot sugarcoat, we can't put kid gloves on this. Every step, every avenue must be pursued. They pursued a multiple pronged state attack legally that, were, that failed to be able to attack the democracy. And when that didn't work, they stormed the Capitol. So they must be held accountable in every possible way there's avenues available to, to this democracy. I, I just think, I just think, Quadrico, that what has happened so far is not enough. Um, Dr. Crowley, you, you know... And it's just not enough. Do? It's just, I mean, what, what Bree said, not... what took place, I mean, that was vicious, that was real. We had Congresswoman Maxine Waters on this show. She said, there is no doubt in my mind that if I had not left the U.S. Capitol early and they had gotten to me, I would be dead. Uh, these folks, I mean, they were out for blood. The, the, this was... To hear, to hear Capitol Hill police officers say this was a coordinated attack, Donald Trump and his administration actually got for, with them to move uh, one of the events to January 6th. This was specifically to target the U.S. Congress. I believe in some courtroom there has to be a reckoning. And look, if Giuliani, if Trump, if any of these folks are found guilty, fine. But there needs to be a real trial, not that crap we saw in the U.S. Senate. What? Well, really you saw... Fuels my, uh, I think my... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. Cortecos, go ahead. Uh, uh, what really fuels my frustration here is, quite frankly, I feel that this is not our fight. One of the reasons that white people, good liberal-minded white people, don't have the wherewithal to understand what happened January 6th is because precisely their identity is wrapped up into <laughs> maintaining power, right? And they're trying to wrestle and, and, and understand this. Let the NAACP take this effort. I'm just not convinced that it will actually do anything to warrant the injustice that continues to take place and that took place on January 6th. But, 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 it but, underscores the reality that black folk continuously try to call America to be its better self. This is for white people to deal with. I don't think it's our fight. But it, uh, but, 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 Bree, it is our fight in yeah. that what they were trying to overthrow was the result of black votes. Exactly. Like, th this is an attack on the concept of multiracial democracy, in my view. So, and, and too, I think we should recognize white people aren't going to do this. <laughs> like, white people, I mean, the whole reason that we are here is because white people are not going to ultimately lead the charge in, in overturning white supremacy. I mean, that has just never been the reality of this nation ever. Um, and that's part of the reason why an organization like the NAACP exists. So again, you know, it's not that any one of these things on its own is going to address the issue. I think it's like, what is the role of an organization like NAACP? And I think they are playing in this moment the role that they have played historically for 100 years. I mean, the NAACP and the Klan are, you know, they, they go back to the same century. They date to about the same century and the same time period for this reason, uh, because 
the, the Ku Klux Klan, you know, formed in the aftermath of the Civil War. It's always been about uh, attacking free black people. And the NAACP has always been about leading the legal fight against those attacks on black freedom. So, you know, I think that that is the role for them to play. Yes, there's a role for white people to play. Yes, white American society should stand up and do this. But the reality is that they're not going to. And I mean, that's part of what we just saw play out with the impeachment. We knew that they weren't going to hold Trump accountable, even though it is all obvious. Why? Because Trump is the embodiment of modern white supremacy. He is like the emblem. He is the mascot. Um, and, and that's why, you know, like it has been said time and time again, of course we know. First of all, if it had been black people uh, even planning a rally on January 6th, they would have had National Guard out there. Like, there's no question we wouldn't have even made it to the steps of the Capitol. Um, the fact that people made it all the way inside is because they had the assistance of the white power structure. The reason that we are having this conversation of trying to figure out how to hold people accountable is because of white supremacy uh, uh, sympathizers with white supremacy within the white power structure. So, you know, I, I think NAACP is doing their role. And here's the deal. The NAACP, Xavier, is not the only group that could actually file a lawsuit. I, I think I think what I think what you're seeing here uh, is an attempt to say, okay, you guys did not want to move on this. Let's take it to a forum. Let's actually see. A judge will decide if they are standing um, uh, to actually uh, move forward. But to Bree's point earlier, this whole and eh, let's just sort of move along. I mean, <laughs> when we when you listen to. Uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talk about vividly what that day was like. When you see the reports being feed away, when you saw the House impeachment managers, I mean, to me, uh, this requires a real, true uh, accountability that needs to take place. And the bottom line is this here. If it's the NAACP, fine with me. If it's some other group, fine with me. I'm saying hold their asses accountable. I mean, we there's a fight over whether a black man can, can sell cigarettes on the street, or whether a man's twenty dollars was was actually a real dollar, tw real twenty dollars bill, and, and he, he died as a result of it. But every attempt is being made to sugarcoat white supremacy in America. We saw with our own two eyes people climbing up the fences. We saw with our own two eyes people are in our congressional chambers. We saw through the impeachment trial the different steps that were taken. We heard the different calls. Um, of Donald Trump. The evidence is laid bare before our eyes. And we as black people, we have to be the, we have saved this democracy over and over again. Saved it with our votes. Um, we, we are, we have a, a James in New York, simply to save it with that state there. Um, we saw uh, with, with, with how the borders were organized. We have to keep saving this democracy. It is what it is. We, we are the head of how this country moves in protecting its citizens. We, we, we signed up for it, unfortunately, um, in terms of what we are doing to push back on um, our, our, our lives and our hopes, but it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. And so, again, uh, we, we reached out to Derek Johnson with the NAACP and Congressman Biddy Thompson uh, to get them on the show. They were unavailable, so we'll certainly try to do that uh, in the All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.